Hey, how's it going everyone? My name is Kevin. Welcome back to my channel. And in this video, I want to create an extension of my previous vulnerability management labs and show you guys how to generate a vulnerability report that you would send to the manager or the device owner in order to address those vulnerabilities. I'm going to show you guys how to generate a report from both Qualys and Nessus, and we'll be modifying those reports using Google Sheets and Excel. If you guys end up liking this video, please hit the like. If you guys want to see more content, please subscribe. Anyways, Let's begin. All right, so we're going to first start off generating a report in Nessus. So we're going to log in. If you followed along from my previous videos, you would have already created a couple scans. And all you need to do is just pick whichever scan you want to generate a report. Go up here, click on report, and we're going to pick a CSV report. The standard columns are going to be more than enough to make your report. So just click on generate. Once it's finished downloading, go ahead and click on it to open it up. Once it's opened, I like to expand these columns up top so that they can be a little bit more readable. Once the columns are nice and expanded, I like to highlight them and change the color to, well, let's do a green. And we're also gonna turn the top columns to filters. That way we can see how many hosts we have, any unique all the unique vulnerabilities. The next thing that I like to do is I like to change the names of some of these columns in order for the manager or the device owner to kind of understand exactly what the data is saying. So the first thing, instead of a name, I like to change it to vulnerability title. Same with description. Vulnerability description. And then the solution. I just change it to vulnerability solution. After renaming the columns, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to summarize all this data using pivot tables. If you don't know what pivot tables are, it's a function that allows you to summarize and organize your data in any way you want. Pivot tables may look intimidating at first, but honestly, it's very easy. To do this, we're just going to hit Control A to highlight all of our data. We're gonna to go to insert, click on pivot table, click on table and range, click OK. And now we're ready to make our first pivot table. The first pivot table that we're going to create is we're going to identify all of the unique vulnerabilities that are in our data. To do this, we're going to drag the vulnerability title column down to the rows. Here you can now see all of the unique vulnerabilities within our data set. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to remove all of the informational related vulnerabilities within our data set. By doing so, we're going to drag risk into our filter section. After dragging it, you're going to see a row up here. We're going to click on this little arrow, select multiple items, and we're going to deselect the none risk score vulnerabilities. We're going to click OK. And now we can identify anything that is medium up to critical. In order to identify how many assets are affected by these vulnerabilities, we're going to drag hosts down to the values field. And here we see uh, seven assets that are affected by this specific vulnerability. I also want to identify which of these vulnerabilities are medium, high, and critical risk. So to do that, we're just going to switch over the risk from filters down to columns. And now we can see that this vulnerability, it is a medium vulnerability. And this vulnerability has a critical rating. I just like to organize it by just right clicking the grand total column and sort it from largest to smallest. For the next pivot table, I want to identify all of the unique asset IPs and I want to see the count of the vulnerabilities those asset IPs have. And to do that, it's actually very easy. We're just going to switch over these two fields. And here you can see that only three assets were scanned in this report. This device in particular has one critical vulnerability, 10 high vulnerabilities, nine medium vulnerabilities with a total of 20 vulnerabilities. We're going to rename this asset IP. We can also click on these individual values to get more information of these vulnerabilities. So if we only wanna see the high vulnerabilities, we just double click this and now we only see the high rated vulnerabilities of this one specific asset IP. 
So this is typically a report that I would normally send to my manager or the device owner in order for both of them to be aware of these vulnerabilities and then begin steps for remediation. Maybe I only want to show one asset, so it could be maybe 192.168.1.9, then I would show only show them this particular part of the report. You might have also noticed the HTML option when generating a report in Nessus, so I'm going to go ahead and show that to you. We're going to click on report and here we're going to click on the complete list of vulnerabilities by host HTML and we're going to generate the report. Once it downloads, go ahead and click, go ahead and open it up. And here you see a little bit more of a professional, fancier looking report. Uh, the only the only downside though is that you really can't customize this report as it's an automatic report done through Nessus. Sometimes these reports also tend to have a lot of bloat data or unnecessary data that's needed in order to remediate these vulnerabilities. Personally, I don't like these kinds of reports. I like to make the Excel based reports because I'm able to customize exactly what columns can be in the report or what columns are unnecessary. That way I can efficiently share the data so we can begin the remediation process. All right, and now I'm going to show you how to generate a report in Qualys and edit it using Google Sheets. We're going to click on reports. We're going to click on new and we're going to click on template based report. We're going to title it whatever we want, <laughs> literally whatever report. For the report template, we're going to pick technical report. If this section doesn't auto populate, just go ahead and click on select and pick whichever assets that you recently scanned in order to generate a report from them. Click run. If you see this error, chances are you've already generated a report and the Qualys Community Edition only allows you to save one report at a time, but that is completely fine. Just click confirm and it's going to automatically download. Once it finishes downloading, go ahead and open this up in Google Sheets. Once it downloads, you're going to notice that all the columns are different than the report from Nessus. That's just because every single vulnerability scanner will generate its own unique report. I'm going to go ahead and delete the header because that's not really necessary. We're going to do the same thing as before and we're going to change the color to whatever we want. And we're going to change this to a filter. After changing all the top columns into filters, we're going to hit Control A. We're going to go to insert and we're going to create a pivot table. Click create. Once we made it to the pivot table function, it's going to look a little bit different, but it's going to function the exact same way. So for the title, we're going to put that in rows. Actually, let's rename this vulnerability title. There we go. Now we're going to see how many assets are affected by these vulnerabilities. So we're going to drag IP down to values. Let's expand this a little bit. We're also going to drag the severity as columns so we can know exactly which vulnerabilities have what severity level. And it looks like this vulnerability has a severity level of three. These two have a severity level of five and oh look at this looks like one of my devices are is running an obsolete version of ubuntu so let's click on that yep and if you remember from our previous videos i did create a virtual box running an obsolete version of ubuntu right, now we're going to copy this we're going to duplicate it and if your pivot table function for some reason disappears then we're going to go all the way down here, click on edit so we can get our pivot table editor back up again. We're going to remove severity, we're going to remove title, and we're going to drag IP as the rows. And this report is shows a total of, I can't count, six assets. We're going to see how many vulnerabilities each asset contains. We're going to get the title, put that in the values field, and it looks like this single device has 49 vulnerabilities. That is not good. Oh, that's right. This is my Windows 10 virtual machine. And I believe I did have an old version of VLC Media Player. We're going to rename this to Asset IP.
Now I want to see the individual count of the severity. There we go. All right, so what if I only want to see only the severity level five vulnerabilities? Let's go ahead and drag the severity field down to the filters section. And we're going to deselect all of them and only look at severity level five. So here you can see a total of four level five rated vulnerabilities. Let's check out, let's look at this one. So let's say this device is owned by say system engineering. So then you would only show kind of this portion of the data to them in order for them to, lead to address a vulnerability. Sometimes you would run into a situation where these vulnerabilities cannot be addressed. Let's create a situation where say this device is our Nessus server and it belongs to system engineering. And the solution to address this vulnerability is to simply update the version of Ubuntu. And after running an update on the test server, it ended up breaking the server. So essentially, we cannot update this device. Maybe the server is pretty old and it cannot support a newer version of Ubuntu. What do you do? So in a situation like this, you would work with multiple departments, maybe with information security, in order to create compensating controls to minimize the potential risk of this vulnerability. And once those compensating controls are created, then we file it for risk acceptance. And you would do this by essentially filling out a risk acceptance form. Now, I kind of created a rudimentary risk acceptance form that a typical company would follow. Mind you, this is a very basic version of one and every single company has their own version of a risk acceptance form. However, all in all, they would all generally have the same kind of information, uh, such as the summary of the request, the devices that are impacted by this vulnerability, the a reason as to why we should accept this vulnerability and compensating controls and at the end and at the very end uh, a plan of action all right i went ahead and filled this out and essentially the summary would be kind of explaining what exactly what's going on with this vulnerability so essentially i just said that qualis identified that this device is affected by this vulnerability and after attempting to update the software and test server and ended up breaking it so the device is unable to hold that update um, and the justification uh, i just said that without this nessus server we'll be left in the dark of any future vulnerabilities that are affecting the and the organization's environment um, the compensating controls maybe i worked with information security and we've configured a firewall to prevent any kind of unauthorized access to the server um, and then we also have a sim in place to identify any malicious behavior coming in and out of the server and lastly for the plan because the server is old there's going to be a plan where it's going to be decommissioned after a new one is installed after the form has been filled out i just go ahead and submit it for the approval process and depending on the severity level of the vulnerability to a accept the risk, then it would require more signatures from possibly the C-suite in order for this form to actually be executed and the vulnerability would then technically be addressed. I kind of went on a tangent on uh, filing certain vulnerabilities for risk acceptance, but that's still a very important part in addressing vulnerabilities. But all in all, this is basically the whole process on how to generate a report within vulnerability management. I'm going to be sharing all of the vulnerability reports I generated in the description down below along with the risk acceptance form if you guys want to go ahead and play with that and kind of get a feel as to what a vulnerability management analyst does. I really do encourage you all to learn more about pivot tables and maybe even find more efficient ways to summarize that data. Lastly, I also recently hit a thousand subscribers. I think I'm at around 1100 right now. I just want to say thank you guys all so much for all of your support. I originally created this channel to help others learn about IT and cybersecurity, um, all while developing my own skills. People from all over the internet helped me gain a lot of insight and a lot of knowledge, and I just want to return the favor. I will continue to make more projects and course reviews, and if you guys have any ideas of what kind of videos I should make, please let me know. And once again, thank you guys so much. If you guys ended up liking this video, please hit the like. If you guys want to see more content, please subscribe, and until then, take care.